Hello everyone and welcome to the 2020 Virtual Song Stages and Seafood Festival, proudly sponsored by the government of Newfoundland and Labrador and Powell Supermarket, your local grocer since 1948. I'm one of your hosts, Adam Pike, and welcome to our third night of the festival. What a great show we have in store for you tonight. If everything was the way it was supposed to be, we would have been having a time at the Small Plates evening at the Bear Roberts Lions Club. Tonight, we're happy to be joined by Chef Roy McPherson, who will be demonstrating how to cook cod ramen with entertainment provided by Pam Parsons. We'll be heading up to Nan's Kitchen at Powell Supermarket, where we'll meet Jamie O'Flaherty, the man behind Powell's beautiful artisan breads. That's all coming up right now, so stay with us. Good evening, everybody. Rory McPherson here coming to you live from Tiffany Village. Uh, I'm the new food and beverage director at Kenny's Pond in Tiffany Village. Great place to work. I'd like to thank the town of Bay Roberts for inviting me back again to Song Stages and Seafood. It's fantastic to be get the honor to come back. Uh, for all those guys who are out there chirping about the Fish Cake Festival, just count yourself lucky because if I had it came out there, I would have thrown down with the best of you. Tonight, we're going to be making a great dish, a dish I've done many times before, but seeing as seafood, uh, festival we're going to be using that Newfoundland staple cod and I'm going to be making some cod ramen. I made this about uh, six years ago at an event went over huge. First thing you're going to need is this lovely Newfoundland cod. I have six ounce portions here and what I'm going to do now I'm going to marinate that because later on I'm going to pan fry it but you really want to get those flavors to start in seeping into the cod. So I got some beautiful white uh, miso paste here which you can buy at Dominion in your grocery store in the international section. And we'll just put a little bit on here and I'll spread that around in a second. That's why I got my gloves on. Okay. Now, miso paste got a very strong flavor, but you got to remember cod is a very mild fish, so it can absorb a lot of great flavors. All right, so we got that. And I'm going to add in now is some ginger. A lot of people, when they peel ginger, have a hard time doing it. They use a knife, they lose a lot. Use a spoon and you just drag your spoon across the ginger and you just take off a very, very thin layer of the skin leaving all that beautiful ginger uh, meat and flesh there, right? When I remember when I first started in the industry many years ago and I'd be peeling ginger, my chef's stem would lose it because of course 90% <laughs> went into garbage because again, it's a very woody, woody uh, aromatic. So once I get all this peeled off here now, I'll just take some, slice it off here. Let's get rid of that. Very couple thin slices. And I'm just going to julienne this and then dice it. And I'm going to sprinkle that over the cod. And then I'm going to put on some uh, chimchurri paste that I've made. Now this chimchurri paste is a bit different. Chimchurri actually is an Argentinian pesto styled uh, sauce. But this one here is very Asian. So I've got uh, Thai basil, cilantro, uh, roasted garlic, cumin, uh, lots of those great flavors. And of course with the ginger and the miso, it's going to be fantastic. So we'll put that on there. A little bit of the chimchurri. Then I'm going to hit it always with fish. I always hit it with lemon zest. It just has a great flavor. Lemon goes with actually any fish dish I do, I always use lemon zest and lemon juice. Anyone who doesn't is cheating you. Okay. And I'm going to cut off a little bit as well and squeeze some of that juice on there. A little bit of seasoning, salt and pepper. Now we'll rub through that miso, marinate this fish up. We'll just let that sit and you really, I wish you had smell a vision you really smell that, it smells terrific. That's going to sit there for a couple of minutes. I'm just going to wipe down my board. Next, for ramen, ramen again is a classical Japanese noodle dish and many different varieties from chicken to beef, seafood. Tonight, because I'm using seafood, that's why I'm using the miso paste. Um, 
most important thing about a ramen, the stock, the flavoring. So you can just go, so they use chicken stock, put in some sesame oil, some uh, soy sauce, lime zest. Yeah, that, that'll work. This sauce here I got going, has been going for a couple of days now. So I started off with a pork chicken stock. I roasted off all the bones with some lemongrass, added the stock, boiled it out, um, let it simmer for a couple of days. And now I'm just gonna finish it off. So I'm gonna add in a little bit more lemongrass. And again, that's just you adding that really great, unique Asian flavor. And you can chop it up, but for my purposes today, because I've already got some in there, I'm just going to nib off the ends here. And toss a few of those stocks in there. That's gonna add a beautiful citrus flavor to this stock. Again, so ramen, you got the codfish, which is mild, which I got seasoned, noodles, they're made out of flour and water, so they're bland. So it can take a lot of flavor in this dish. Cod is marinating. Stock is going. I'm going to add another slice or two of ginger actually into that stock because you can never have too much of that into a dish like this. Well, I sat in there. Next, we're going to do the garnish that goes with the ramen. Again, varying techniques out there. Some people just do very, very thin veg and just put it on raw, put the hot stock on it with their meats and stuff, whatever they serve it, or their fish or their seafood. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put uh, lots of vegetables in my stock. All right. So I've got some lovely carrot here. And you'll see all these little funky grooves I got cut in there. That's just more of an Asian flair to add to this dish. So you can see it sort of looks like a little uh, I'm not an Asian chef, but it's not bad. <laughs> it it's, uh, makes it look a little bit different, sort of like a crab. Put that in there. Okay. Any Asian dish for me? Cabbage. You can use Napa cabbage, Chinese lettuce, which is actually a cabbage, or just regular green cabbage. The thing to remember with regular green cabbage, you got to slice it really thin. Napa cabbage, Chinese lettuce, bok choy, very, very quickly cooked. Uh, our traditional Newfoundland Jigs dinner cabbage takes a little bit longer. So I'm just going to slice this really thin now. And cabbage actually is one of the vegetables that actually gets stronger the longer you cook it. And you'll notice that uh, there's a dish that comes after a jig dinner called bubble and squeak because of the high concentration of cabbage. The squeak is caused by the toxins in the cabbage which causes gas. So uh, that's why in Newfoundland, of course, lots of people that love cabbage or they hate it for specific reasons. So we got our carrots, we got our cabbage. I'm going to add in some shiitake mushrooms. Now, in a ramen, shiitake mushrooms are cut in generally a certain way. So I've already cleaned and brushed these off. So you, you, they're usually served whole. And what I'm going to do, notch on each side, and I'm going to form a little star on top. And again, that's all about the presentation of the dish afterwards. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to fry that off in a frying pan to get it nice and golden brown. Big thing I like is make contrast into the dish, right? So normally a lot of ramens, the fish or the protein is cooked directly in the stock. I'm actually going to cook the fish. I'm going to pan fry it Newfoundland style, but with these lovely Asian seasonings on it. Thanks, Rory. Now it's time to hear some music from our friend and MHA, Pam Parsons. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's certainly a great honor to be a part of this year's Song Stage of Seafood Festival, the annual festival. Um, obviously, it's a bit different this year given our circumstances, but I'm certainly happy to participate. And I'd like to thank all of our volunteers, uh, of course, led by Ron Delaney, you know, for making this happen again this year. I'm going to do a Canadian classic by Canada's own Blue Rodeo, a classic song, Lost Together, because we certainly are in, in this together. Sing along.
Great job, Pam. Let's head back over to Chef Rory's kitchen to see how his dish is coming along. Now that I got some of this stuff on the go, I'm going to get my pan heated up here, which is ready to rock, and I'm going to put my cod in to start searing. So you can use any type of oil. Um, I like to use canola oil, high smoke point. It holds the fish. You could use sesame oil, but this dish is packed with so much sesame flavor and stuff, it would just be a tad bit of overkill. So I'm just going to use straight up canola, put that in there, turn it around, cover the bottom of the pan. What I like to do, hold my hand close to the bottom and see if it's hot. Don't stick it to it, of course, but just lay it on there. So presentation side down. So you'll notice that on cod, there's the skin side. That's the side that you should serve down so people can't see it. So I'll put the, the part which was closest to the bone. That's what's going to be pointing up. You get that lovely sear going here now. And I'm going to gather up the rest of this marinade and throw that in there. Because that's all flavor. You can't waste it. Okay, that's going. Now... Next, I'm going to take some of this veg I got done here now, and I'm going to take some of my stock. I'm going to put it on to boil. I'm going to just sort of parboil my, my veg, a lot of it, in this little bit of stock here. That's just for plating purposes. You could just pile it all in there, toss in the noodles, and mix it around. But for me, I want to make sure that the people at Bay Roberts who are out there. And another thing, if you're ever in St. John's, Come visit Tiffany Village in Kenny's Pond. You won't be disappointed. Lovely spot to come visit after this COVID-19 is over, of course. Socially distancing. I'm just going to turn on my, my pan here now. So I'm going to take my cabbage, toss this in the pan, and that will just slowly come to boil. Because, again, cabbage and the carrots are going to take a little longer to cook. I want to make sure they're nice and tender. All right. That's going. So next, more veg. Again, this is all about veg and garnish. Okay? So I'm going to toss some uh, red onions. I'm going to julienne them. Now, the reason I like to cut them so thin, um, like any vegetable, all vegetables have sugar. And the more surface area you give, the more flavor that comes out of it. Uh, you could... Uh, Caramelize these, which are, you'll notice that like for on onions really turn brown. That's all the sugar. Onions have the most sugar pretty much of any vegetable. But I'm going to put this rated to get red ones right in with our veg here, just to get them a little quick blanch. And I'm not going to be stirring it up, mixing it around. I'm just going to let it sort of poach. Cabbage takes longer, carrots, than the onions. I just want them steamed. Next, we're going to add in is some snow peas. Very, very Asian. All of, uh, whatever, Chinese restaurant, Thai restaurant, Vietnamese, snow peas are generally in there somewhere. Now, I'm just going to cut those a little bit thicker. I won't cut them too thin because I want people to be able to see the veg they're eating. You know, some people like, some people don't. But uh, it just makes it easier to pick out. For me, I love all the veg. So, I just, it just makes it easier for me to get the good stuff I love right away. I'll add that in there. Another type of mushroom we're going to be using tonight along with the shiitakes, okay, is uh, enoki. Again, a, dish, a, a mushroom which is used all throughout the world, but again, is very, very prevalent in Asian cuisine. And these, these lovely, almost look like little uh, button mushrooms, sort of. So I'll just nip this end off of that. Save this stuff after, that's great to toss into a mushroom soup. Okay, and for some color, we're gonna be adding in some peppers. So I got some lovely red and orange peppers. You can use anything you want. Um, and you're not limited to the veg and stuff I've used here tonight. You can use any type of veg and stuff you can get at your grocery store. If you like bok choy, uh, like I said, the Chinese cabbage, uh, you name it. Some people put beets. Depends where you're from and what you like. Now I'm just going to cut these peppers up nice and thin. And these will be added in almost at the last second because you really want them to be crisp. Again, in the dish, it's all about contrast and what's going to hit the palate. So you're going to have your fish, which is going to be nice and flaky, your noodles, which are going to be soft, right? You want your veg to have a bit of crisp and crunch, but again, lots of that great flavor. So we're just going to leave these here to the side, along with our enoki mushrooms, because they won't take any time to cook. It's going to be slow. Now, 
Cod's been in here generally going to take you know, four minutes per side. Now these are some nice healthy Newfoundland cod fillets. I think we may have got them in the Bay Rabbits area. Ron Delaney can answer that one. But um, I'm just going to take a look now and see where we are using my handy dandy fish spatula which you can buy at uh, like places like B&B Sales or somewhere like that generally or Paderno uh, uh, which is at a Canadian tar now. And what it has is it's very flexible because under the fish but it has lots of holes so any grease stuff goes right through and doesn't stay on your spatula and slides on your plate. So I'm just going to take a look underneath here. Oh yeah, here we go. Here comes the money shot. And there you go. Lovely. Looking delicious, Roy. Now it's time that we take a visit to Nan's Kitchen at Powell's Supermarket, where we're joined by Valerie Morgan and Jamie O'Flaherty as they show us how their amazing artisan breads are made. Uh, welcome to Nan's Kitchen. I'm Valerie Morgan and I'm here with Jamie O'Flaherty who is the mastermind behind the beautiful artisan breads that uh, we have at the house Supermarket and Nan's Kitchen. So Jamie, um, I can't wait to get into a little bit about I guess the process of this beautiful bread that you make uh, but uh, tell me I guess a little bit about the very simple ingredients that go in your sourdough bread which is pretty amazing. Thank you Valerie. These loaves of bread come from these simple ingredients. Here we have white unbleached flour. Here we have water at a temp temperature somewhere around uh, 90 degrees. Here we have salt. You can use ordinary table salt, uh, kosher salt, whatever your little heart desires. Here we have the starter. The starter is the lifeblood of our bread. I don't use commercial yeast in my bread. There is yeast in this culture. That is, is contains flour and water only, and it captures the yeast and beneficial bacteria, not unlike a culture that is used to make cheese and yogurt. So Jamie, those those simple ingredients make this this beautiful bread, um, and of course you make a variety of sourdoughs. So for people who maybe aren't familiar with sourdough, we see the, the, you know, the clean of ingredients that go in there. Uh, what is a sourdough? How is it different from you know, some of the other breads you, you buy off the shelf? A sourdough, a proper sourdough, uh, has several beneficial benefits, I'll say, both on the taste side and on the health side. For the health benefits, if somebody is slightly gluten intolerant, somebody has some maybe slight digestive problems or somebody who wants to stay away from processed sugar like a diabetic this is the answer as you can see there's no sugar in it there are no fats there are no eggs there is no dairy this is it this is what we use uh, for anybody who's on any particular kind of diet for the most part this is the answer so jamie i'm just um I'm just standing here next to these couple of loaves and I can just smell this beautiful aroma. So I can imagine that's probably one of the many things that you fell in love with when it came to uh, to making sourdough breads. And maybe as you, uh, I don't want to interrupt your work, but maybe as you're uh, making some, uh, some starter and some dough there, okay. you could tell us a bit about how you fell in love with sourdough. Because it's definitely a love affair. <laughs> <laughs> it is a love affair. It is a passion. And it is a passion that came from it started out as a curiosity. I found a recipe online for sourdough bread that contained flour, water, and salt only. And I thought, yeah, right, that's going to be wonderful to eat, no doubt. And that curiosity turned into a fascination. You know, I'm seeing this all over the place. It must work. So I tried it. Made my own starter. Told my dear wife, who puts up with this, that if you see this mason jar full of this white goop up in the cupboard, don't throw it out. Oh yeah, she said, what are you into now? So, I did. I made my starter. It took almost three weeks before I was ready for my first loaf of bread. My first loaf of bread was one of the ugliest things you've ever seen. But when I tasted it, it just, it was like, Nothing else you've... Yeah, it was, you know, one, I did this. I didn't use any commercial yeast. I, I, I harnessed this from the, from the air the same way the Egyptians did 5,000 years ago. 
this process was this governance like, accident. And from there, from the fascination, it came to an obsession. From an obsession now to a career. I just recently turned 60 and I have no intention to retire because I love what I do. That's a pretty special gift, eh? I love what you do. To I know it's cliche. People say if you love what you do, you will never work again a day in your life. Uh, my wife and some of my co-workers think I'm nuts because I will leave work after doing this all day and go home some days and make bread. Uh, the other night I made a focaccia for my wife and I for a treat to sit down and watch television. And she just shakes her head and says, you, know, you do this all day at work, how can you do it at home? That's I, I think that's the key to a happy marriage. If anyone watching can take notes. That's a, certainly a great way to uh, your spouse's heart, for sure. I have, totally made. I have it in a stainless steel bowl. You can see how it's changed the look. That resting period, see how jiggly it is? That dough, you can really feel the dough starting to expand and getting kind of, not spongy, but uh, it got a different texture to it. I wet my hand in warm water, and you will notice how little, even with the glove on, this sticks to my hand. And you can see how it, see how I can stretch it. That's what time does to glue. This again requires no kneading. What I'm doing, stretching out the dough, that helps the glue strands align, and also equalizes the temperature throughout the dough. Jamie, I can see why people affectionately call you the bread scientist. <laughs> Thank because you. there is certainly a science to it. There is. It's a, it's a combination of science and art. What we have is brown rice flour. Brown rice flour is like an empty stick, almost like a lubricant. Sprinkle that on your fingers, it feels like millions of little ball bearings. I sprinkle that over the table. allows that dough to move as you yes. see fit. Here, this is a coup, what the bakers call a couche cloth. This is unbleached flax linen and it helps uh, the, the dough hold its shape during the proofing stage and it wicks away the moisture from the surface of the dough. This is called a flipper board and you can see why. This is certainly not the way that Nan makes, Nan makes no. bread. <laughs> this is my most popular blend, 15% whole wheat. And basically, it's all unbleached flour. That's all I use is unbleached flour, which whole wheat is. And this is the flavor point and texture that I decided on with my previous customers as to what their favorite blend was. If you remember, or maybe you yourself bake bread, uh, you may remember your mom, your nan, your dad, your granddad, whatever, making bread. It rolls a lot in the oven. That bread has time to rise without tearing the crust. Because this bread is baked at such a high temperature, what we try to do with these ovens, your stone deck ovens, is to recreate the age-old wood-fired oven. If you put a bread in, a loaf in, without slashing it, which you will see the final slash before I put them in the oven, you will end up with a brick that is, it can't rise because the heat has solidified the crust already. We put in steam and the steam helps the crust uh, gelatinize and that keeps it moldable, that it will, have, will allow it to expand and allow it to expand in a controlled manner.
to a five course meal. Thank you to Powell's Supermarket, a proud sponsor of the 2020 Song Stages and Seafood Festival. Powell's Supermarket, your local grocer since 1948. Let's head back over to Chef Roy McPherson's kitchen to check on how this dish is going. Cod, it's going to flake off beautifully on top. If I had put it in stock, it would have boiled and dissipated a bit. So that's why I'm going to leave it whole like this and I'm going to put it right on top so people can see that fish. But when they touch it with their spoon or their chopsticks, it's going to come out, it's going to look terrific. Give a little bit of seasoning on top of there again. I'm going to take a little bit more lemon juice. Because you got to remember, that's thick pieces of fish. The seasoning takes a while to get in there. And again, you can never have enough lemon juice on fish as it's cooking. Okay, so we've got our veg, another garnish we're going to use later. These go on directly last. Green onions. Every Chinese restaurant you go to or Vietnamese use green onions. Okay, and I'm going to cut those on a bias. And that's going to be one of our garnishes at the top, right at the end. And again, goes great with all dishes, not just Asian food. I, if you, uh, uh, our friend, a good friend of mine from Ireland introduced me to Champ, which is a mashed potato with lots of butter and green onions. One of the best potato dishes you're going to have. So, stock's going. Veg is going over here, bubbling nicely now, you'll see. Okay. Cod is almost ready to go. I'm going to take my shiitake mushrooms. I'm going to lay that in with the cod because I want that to sear. You want to get it a little bit brown, um, get some of that flavor into that shiitake mushroom. Because again, like most mushrooms, about 80% liquid. People, they love the texture and they don't love it. It's about um, 60 to 70% water, right? So you impart that flavor. It tastes fantastic. Next, I'm going to use my steam noodles. Now, these are steam noodles that you can buy at the grocery store. The reason I like them, they're pre-cooked. So you just got a quick flash in here and they're going to be ready to rock. Um, ramen noodles are specific uh, if you're in Japan for sure. But again, uh, the ability to get them here is limited. So unless you know someone, you have a, an order coming in. So these steamed noodles will definitely fill the bill. Uh, it's not going to be like your typical itchy band noodles you had in university. These here are the real deal. So you toss, toss those in there. I cook them in the stock to get that flavor in those noodles, right? So I'll take my lovely fork here, I'll just stir these around. Now when I'm taking my noodles out, I have to be cautious of those uh, lemongrass sticks because again, it's grass, it actually is grass, so it's uh, not something you're going to be uh, able to gnaw through generally, right? Unless you're really puree it well. Noodles are in here cooking, veg is cooking, fish is almost done. Now I'm going to take a look at my mushrooms here which have been cooking side by side. You'll see that lovely brown caramelization on top. I'm getting ready to motion look at that. Doesn't that look terrific? Fantastic. Now, I'm gonna to toss my peppers right on top of my snow peas now, just to get them warm, because even though I want them crispy, they still gotta be warm and cooked. Okay. All about color. I'm big on color, adding it to the dish. It's what the customer expects. Um, you know, variety, different contrasts, you know, and just because people say noodles, they think simple. Absolutely not. It can be served at any restaurant in the world. All restaurants serve it. In Newfoundland and Labrador, you can get it at Kenny's Pond, Tiffany Village, or you can get it at Raymond's more than likely if they got a good day. I'm just kidding, guys. They do great stuff down there. Fish is ready to go. You just test that as normal. And yes, it's okay to touch it because, you know, hands are clean, nice and firm. Now, we'll just check our noodles quickly, just to make sure we're ready to go here. Now let that go for a second. Higher. Here we go. Now, we'll get our serving dish. Now, ramen noodles, like any noodles, they're not meant to be uh, high and mighty. It's a uh, street food slash peasant dish, classically, is meant to be slurped. So the stock you put in here, like when I go for ramen noodles, don't give me a soup spoon. I'm going to eat the noodles. Uh, I'm going to eat lots of them fast and slurp the, the stock. If you want to see a great chef do it, check out David Chang on the Food Network. He'll show you how to eat ramen noodles. I was doing it that anyway. I didn't know I was doing it right. My wife thought it was crazy, but it actually is. That's the way you're supposed to eat them. And... Uh, you know, don't be embarrassed if you're slurping because if you're not slurping, 
The reason you serve it because the stock and stuff is good enough, it, it can't be wasted. If you're going to sit there with a teaspoon on it, you'll be there all night. And normally ramen noodles or any type of noodles, the portions are huge. They're really big. So uh, that's why, uh, you know, people don't like to leave any of it behind. So we'll just put the, the bed of the noodles. Make sure I got my cloth here to clean down our bowl. Okay. Now, next we'll get our veg. I'll just stir that around. You see that cabbage is nice and uh, nicely cooked now. The, the carrots, again, there's still a bit of crunch, but again, that's what you want. I'm going to hit it with a bit of seasoning because I'm big on believing this, uh, you know, everybody needs to have a bit of salt and pepper. Now, nice colors, different shapes. You know, it's what you want to see when you go, when you get a restaurant, you get anything, you want to see. Uh, variety, you want to see value, and you want to see this effort went into it. And at Tiffany Village and Kenny's Pond, that's what you're going to get when you come to any of our uh, outlets. Whether you're a guest or a family member. Now, what I'm going to do next, actually, I'm going to take out these noodles. Now, not all, not all uh, restaurants or chefs will do this. A lot will. Generally, they serve a boiled egg with their with their noodles, that's generally cooked soft boiled, but I'm going to do a poached egg. For me, I just like I just like the poached egg and it's cooking it directly in the stock is definitely going to add a great flavor to it. Our chef is getting there now. Let's head over to hear some music by Pam Parsons. Hello again, everyone. It's great to be back for this year's version of the Song Stages and Seafood Festival here in Bay Roberts. Again, a great big thanks to our volunteers for making this possible. And I'm happy to say as well that the provincial government continues to be a great sponsor for this event. I'm going to play uh, one of Newfoundland's own Shanty Gunnott's Rockin' on Water. So please sing along.
look at how Chef Rory's cod ramen is coming along. We'll just crank that up to max. Now, for poaching an egg, your water shouldn't be rapidly boiling. It should be at a simmer, right? And what I like to do, stir the pot, okay? And what that does when you crack in the egg, it doesn't go directly to the bottom of the sink. It gives a chance for the egg uh, white to congeal and the yolk to congeal, then it floats there nicely. Don't worry about it going in here with some noodles. Don't worry if it does dissipate, because what you're gonna do, you're gonna crack it up anyway and eat it with your dish, right? And the egg adds a different dimension of flavor and also adds a different dimension of protein to your dish. I'm gonna shut off my cod here now. That's ready to go. Stir this, and then I'll start cracking my eggs in here. So you'll see I got this going around here nicely now. One. And you can see the, the white starting to rise there. And I'll just give it a little stir around just to make sure. And then that'll pop up to the top when it's ready to go. Now, these enoki mushrooms, very, very delicate. I'm just gonna toss those in here just to quickly flash those. I'll just break them up a bit. My lovely serving tongs here. Again, because they're so delicate, it takes no time to cook. You see they're already limp there. Okay, next we're going to take a piece of our cod. We'll get this nice uh, generous portion here, fully cooked. And again, like I say, a lot of ramen, they'll really break up the protein. But you can see how flaky and beautiful and juicy that codfish is. When your fork hits that, it's going to be done. Lovely. A uh, lovely shiitake mushroom going to go in there. Okay, put another one on. Next, we're going to get is some uh, stock. Again, the broth is what makes it. I pour it directly over the bed and stuff. Again, you want it to pool. You want it to be substantial. Okay, and a little trick I do, I hit it in again with orange zest. And lemon zest. The Orange and Lemon Federation should get a hold of me because I definitely pushed their product, I'll tell you. There you go. Now, sesame seeds. I'm going to hit it with a bit more of this chimichurri. Newfoundland and Labrador has become famous for their beautiful tourism ads. Here's crayons. I am green today. I chirp with joy like a cricket song. I am gray today. Gloomy and damp like a morning fog I am orange today Loud and messy like finger paint on the wall I am yellow today I shine my light out like the sun I am white today Soft and quiet like new snow I am blue and cool like the sea I'm a rainbow today all the colors of the world I'm a rainbow today all the colors of the world I'm a rainbow today all the colors of the world
Newfoundland and Labrador. So much bright and vibrant scenery can be found around our beautiful province. Thank you to the government of Newfoundland and Labrador for sponsoring our 2020 festival. Let's check back in with Chef Rory McPherson. Okay, and now I'm going to try to fish out one of these eggs. Now, don't worry if the egg looks a bit underdone, okay? Because it's going to go right into the stock, continue cooking. That lovely protein is going to go in there. Nice flavor of the egg yolk. Let's clean off the bowl. Now, we'll take it over here with a lovely glass of wine. There you have it. Ramen noodles a la Rory. Uh, terrific dish. Hearty. Full of flavor. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Uh, Bay Roberts, Song Stage and Seafood. Wait for next year. If you're having it, I'm coming. All you fish cake competitors, you better get your, your knives out and get them sharp. I'm coming for you. Just kidding. But am I? We'll see. Thanks so much to Ron Delaney and the team. And I'd like to thank the uh, uh, team here at Kenny's Pond and at Tiffany Village for their support in putting this event together tonight. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in Bay Roberts. Thanks so much, Chef Roy. That cod ramen looked great. Thank you once again to Chef Roy McPherson for doing a demo of how he cooks his cod ramen and to Pam Parsons for providing the great music for tonight. Once again, the 2020 Song Stages and Seafood Festival is proudly sponsored by the government of Newfoundland and Labrador and Powell's Supermarket. Visit them online at powellsnl.ca and let them do the shopping for you. From their family to yours, stay home and stay safe. On behalf of all of us here, thank you for watching. Be sure to join us tomorrow night for a cooking demo by Chef Chris Chafe and entertainment by Gerard O'Brien. Goodbye for now.